Uh. Well, that didn't work, did it? They knocked my camera over. Well, after we've had a bit of fun with the chickens, and we're steaming up in here a little bit, um, I didn't get much of a shot of them going to roost, but I tell you what, playing around with them made me want to cook with some of their produce and before we cleaned out the chicken pen last week we got some eggs that were a little bit dirty so they've not gone in the kitchen they've been in a bowl outside for a couple of days there's nothing wrong with them but the shells are a little bit covered in crap so you won't want to have them in the kitchen when you're like cooking a full English or you know you're baking and eggs so what I'm going to do I'm going to split them into a quiche. A quiche. I whistled when I said quiche then, Jim. Did it second time as well. Did I? So, in here, I've got just a recipe off BBC website, I think it was. But this is 175 grams of plain white flour and 100 grams of... I didn't actually have any butter. I should have used salted butter or unsalted. But instead we've got, is it clover? Yeah. Can't believe it's not butter. So, don't want to get my hands dirty, so I'm just using a fork to mash the butter and the flour together. And then I'm going to add a few teaspoons of, tablespoons of cold water just to bring it together. There's a egg yolk in here as well. And this is going to be a pastry we're going to put in this flan dish with the bottom that comes out and uh, we're going to blind bake it in the oven another experiment going on as well today I used to have a jar of beans which I'd keep for blind baking stuff and I haven't blind baked anything for over a year so what did I do? Well, I recycled the jar. I've actually got um, mustard seeds in it, believe it or not, uh, which I use for sometimes curry making, but depends. I don't go in very many curries. Mustard seeds don't. Um, so instead, we've got this popping corn from the Asian supermarket, and uh, Gemma don't like it. Whilst it's fun to pop your own, it's that cheap these days to buy microwave ones. When she does them for the kids, she tends to just use the microwave packets. So I'm going to blind bake this pastry in the oven with hopefully some popping corn on top of it to weigh it down. I'll just turn the oven on actually, we'll have come to think of it. Um, so I'm hoping a bit of baking parchment on top, popping corn on the top of that to weigh it down. Blind bake it for, do you reckon, 20 minutes? Something like that. And then, uh, well, we'll either have a blind baked pastry case or we'll have a blind baked pastry case with an oven full of popcorn. Can, can I just say, I don't think, I think the reason I didn't like the popping corn was because of the oil that we used at the time. Oh, what oil was it? I think, was it rapeseed? That's what we've got now. We use something different to what we usually use. Yeah, the stuff that we had before was soybean. Yeah, maybe it was it that. It was the soybean oil that we had for work, but yeah, we didn't like it. It didn't taste nice. I'll try some again. Right, I'm just going to pop some teaspoons of uh, water in here and then see if we can bring this together. So I've rolled it out as thin as I think I can. I'll probably get some turd complaining that... Uh, You've not washed your cooker top or something like that. Live in the real world, pal. So I'm just going to drape it in. Oh, look at that. It's gone in lovely. I'm just going to press it into the corners. It's like Bake Off, innit? I don't watch Bake Off, by the way, so uh, don't comment on it. So, just pressing this into the corners. Oh, it looks really quite cool. I might even treat myself to a jam tart with the trimmings. What do you think? I'm actually 
overly impressed with that. I shouldn't be this happy, to be fair. Right, and then we'll just trim off the surplus with a knife. So uh, let's just go like this. There we go. It's coming off nicely. I don't want this to turn into a cooking video because it isn't. This is just what I'm doing after I work. Clean the chickens out. Make tea. I'm just going to get that cleaned up a little bit neater. There we go. That's ready for the oven. And this, well, there's not that much there. Probably won't get a jam tart out of it. What do you reckon? Anyway, a bit of baking parchment on top of that bad boy. And then, popping corn. Some of England's finest streaky bacon. Going in a pan, this is smoked streaky bacon. So this is all going to be part of the filling. Oh, sailor. Just look at her. Really good stuff, this. This is what we use in the pub. This streaky bacon. And, oh, it's just some of the best I've ever used before. And, uh, well, it's that good. We bring it home as well. Well, don't want too much. So there's about four or five rashes in here. I might just put one more in, just to spoil myself. Look at that! So that's the blind pastry case. Not blind, it's about to be blind baked. And I've pricked it all over. We're going to see if this popping corn does the job. I don't see why it shouldn't. It looks like it's going to work, doesn't it? Some more in. Put loads in there. If this is going to pop, it's going to be an oven full. So that's going in the oven at 200 for 15 minutes. In she goes. And then, here's the bacon we fried off. The fat's been drained off of it now. And I've also grated up 140 grams of Davistow Welsh cheddar cheese. I believe it's Welsh. This guy, I can't remember. But anyway, they sell it in Morrison's and it's friggin' amazing stuff. So that's gonna get mixed in with the egg mixture, a little bit of double cream, a little bit of whole milk and the bacon and when the pastry case is out we're going to pour all this on top so these little beauties are the eggs that we've been talking about and uh, you can see some of them are quite doidy so they're the ones we're going to pull out and use today we'll have that one we'll have that one that one, the nice big eggs. That's four. We'll grab five. So what I want to do is crack them over the bowl and then drop them in there. And that way, any crap isn't falling in to our mixture.
beautiful one or two little flakes of uh, unwantedness in there but we'll flick that out with the end of the knife in a minute and then get these bad boys beaten up and into well the pastry case so there we have the eggs I've just taken out those tiny little flecks of shell that made its way in there just one or two little bits nothing to worry about and then we're just going to add a little bit of cream a little bit he says and then to prevent it from being far too thick and rich we're going to also have a splash of milk and this will just prevent the whole thing blowing up like a souffle I hope we'll see it's terrible lighting in this kitchen isn't it Whilst I'm waiting for that bad boy to blind bake, I want to treat myself to a beer. I don't know if this is a can of Secret City or Pilsner, because it's got no label on it, so I'm bringing the unlabeled ones home. If it's Secret City, I'm on to a winner. If it's Pilsner, I'm on to a winner. Oh, it's the Pilsner, boys and girls. Oh. oh, absolutely lovely. Fuck a duck. That was close, wasn't it? Nearly had a camera accident. Right, let's pull out our hopefully bland baked pie of goodness. Oh yes, so I'm just going to lift this and hopefully, I've got a pan at the side here, I can tip all of this corn into that pan to cool down and we can reuse it again. And then now I've taken that out of here, looks great, I'm going to pop this back in for another five minutes to brown up. I wouldn't normally be showing you this because of the colour of the glass in the oven door on a general week, but you know, we've got a goddess of a housewife in this building. Yeah, I've got Dominic to clean it. Right, let's have a look. Oh, it looks great. Pulled in away from the edges just a touch, that's not a problem. So let's get this bacon sprinkled in. While it's still hot to trot. I think I did about right there with about five, four or five rashes of bacon. Don't look like too little and too much. And then we're going to put quite a bit of the cheese in the actual quiche itself. Like that. That's a lot of cheese inside. That's a good thing. And then we've got the beaten egg. I've added a little bit of salt and nutmeg. bad boy in there. You know what? I could probably squeeze a bit more egg in there, so I'm just going to smash another couple of eggs into that. We'll get a couple of today's fresh ones, actually. There we go. One. Two. Cooking on the fly, boys and girls. Again, just a spot of cream and a dab of milk, I know you can't see this, but trust me it's happening. There we go. So a bit of extra topping. Let's get that whizzed up. I think there's enough nutmeg on the edge of the doodly-doo to 
season this. Oh yes. Now we're talking. And then the remainder of Le Chies on Le Top. Oh, you know what? If I had some mushrooms, I'd just put two or three slices of mushrooms on the top there, but I don't. So I'll turn the oven down. It's closer to 170, 180 now. We're gonna just sit that back on there. In she goes. Job done. See you in about 25 minutes to half an hour. Five minutes over the allotted cooking time. I suspect it's a boot done. But I'm worried if I pull it out, it'll go soft on me. Story of my life. The only thing I'm worried about is overcooking the edges of the pastry, so I think we're going to have to call it quits at some point. It certainly has risen. Is that 30 minutes? Shall we go for it? Or shall we just turn the heat down considerably to about 60 and just see what happens? Let it kind of cool down in there, hopefully it should set. Time's up. Oh, it did say time's up. Aha. Gemma's keen for a quickie. I mean quiche. I do think it's going to drop. But it looks like it's set quite nicely, doesn't it, love? Oh, it does smell good. If you look at that, actually, like, you've got some actual kind of structure in the egg where it's, you know, you can see where it's split. That looks like an absolutely bloody blinding quiche, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back later on for a tasting when it's cooled down a touch. Do you not just want to poke it? No, because I'm hoping it doesn't drop. And looking at it, you know, I don't think it's going to drop too much. I can see it actually shrinking a bit. But as long as it stays level with the top of the pastry case, should have winner. Well, it's settled a little bit. This is my tea from what I would say is quite an epic. Uh, oh, look at that. Come out perfectly. Quite an epic vlog today, folks. So there we go. Oh, I tell you what, that pastry smells nice. Let's have a little slicey poo. So I'm going to do this again because it's so easy. But next time I'm going to do it with tomato and mushrooms on the top and a few cheeky little sprigs of basil maybe. Oh, there we go. Oh, you little beauty. You can hear Abby upstairs. She's very excited. Oh, just look at that. It's turned out perfect. Oh, and it holds in the hand as well. Now that's spot on for taking a work. Let's have a go. Yes, thank you. This is amaze balls. Mmm, the benefits of having chickens in your back garden. There we go, folks. Thank you very much. I hope I've made you all really hungry. So go out and uh, get some eggs and bacon and make a quiche. Can you hear my lips slacking? <clears throat> See you on the next one, folks.